Hello and welcome to our show. I'm glad to have you with us for this segment of TV Toastmasters. I'm Lisa Steindorf and I'm a member of Washington Street Toastmasters here in Portland, Oregon. And I'm your host for this segment of Good People Doing Good Things. My guest this evening is Joanne Paris, a very busy manager at LumenCore. And I'm excited to have Joanne as our guest so we can find out more not only about her work, but also about the intercultural differences between countries that Joanne has lived and worked in. So, Joanne, welcome. It's Thank a pleasure you. to have you here. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Oh, it's my pleasure. So tell us a little bit about what you do at LumenCore. I am a service manager at LumenCore. What that means is I am the point of contact between our technical support, mm -hmm. our sales, our engineering, manufacturing, and our customers. So uh, every we, I deal with the internal customers, and the technical support department deals with the external customers. So internal customers. So who would come to you and, and ask for your support and help? I would want to say everybody. Oh, really? Wow. Th that's <laughs> yes, a busy job. Yes. It's a busy job. And I enjoy been working there, and I've been enjoying my time there. Mm -hmm. And would you say, who's easier to work with, the customers or the technical people? I would say both. OK. So customers, they always want their products right away. Mm -hmm. As we joke at Or work, maybe yesterday. Yesterday, <laughs> correct, correct. And as a matter of fact, before I came here today, our customer called in and said, we, you, you guys just got your product, we want to, to have that right back. And so I had to stay a little bit uh -huh. <laughs> and to fix that one and so that we can have a quicker turnaround. So we just have, okay guys, drop everything, this is our new priority. So every day is a, there's a different priority. It's different. And you need to be flexible and right on point when things change? Correct. So it sounds like it's very fast-paced. It's a very fast-paced um, environment. It's I'm used to it because I've been in manufacturing most of my career. Oh, okay. And so there's always changes in schedule. Mm -hmm. And like my old boss says, um, only constant in manufacturing is change. And yeah, well. You have to embrace that. That's right, and that's <laughs> actually the point in life, isn't it? The only thing that stays consistent is that nothing stays consistent. Correct. So tell us a little bit about where you're from. You were not born in the United States, but you're here now. So how did you get here? What, uh, what's happened in your life? Interesting question. <laughs> so after graduating college in the Philippines, my mom and dad, my parents, since I'm the only girl, mm -hmm. and they wanted me to stay in our small town. Right. And so, which I did as a good Filipino. Right. Okay. I, I stayed in a small town where my dad used to work for mm -hmm. as a receptionist. Mm -hmm. And I just graduated with an engineering degree. And they didn't have anything for me, so just become a receptionist. Wow. Which is okay, okay, I, I, can, I can do that for a while, for maybe six months, right? Right. I heard there was a hiring for the engineering department. I walked down there, I spoke to the manager or the director, and I asked him, I'd like to apply for this job. And he looked at me and told me that there's no such thing as a female engineer. Wow. Now, this is like first-hand experience of social norm in the Philippines. Wow. Because growing up, my parents, we didn't have, we, were, we didn't have any... Uh, gender roles, like for mm -hmm. example, you need to do the laundry, you need mm -hmm. to do this. Everybody mm -hmm. do all did the their parts mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, one of the engineers told the manager, like maybe we can have a female engineer. Wow. And then he said he insisted. I just remember this one. No, we don't have that because there's no such thing as a female engineer. And I told him, actually, sir. In my class, 40% is women. 40% of your graduating class of engineers was women. Yes. That's so interesting. So how did how could, how is that how would you explain that? I think it would be interesting for the people watching to hear that if the university is graduating that many females in engineering, but the businesses in this man's mind it just wasn't even a possibility. How do you explain that? I like I said, it was my first-hand experience. I didn't right. realize that that was what's going on. That was the reality. 
Because you've been brought up so differently. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I see women in my class, I thought that was normal. And so I realized that it wasn't, that wasn't working for me. I don't have any future in that company. Mm -hmm. So I secretly got a passport. So my parents did not want me to leave a small town. So when I found out there was a hiring going to Japan, recent college graduates, I applied and I got hired. I applied for a visa. And I would say two weeks prior to leaving, I told them about it. Oh about my gosh. My plan, so you could see how my mom was frustrated and disappointed with my decision, but she couldn't do anything about that. Wow. And so, and then I worked in Japan for three years. I was told, we were told that we could learn the language while working, they will pay for our tuition fee, and right. I took advantage of that. I studied Japanese mm -hmm. after work, mm -hmm. and then I fell in love. I met somebody from the U.S. there while ah. he was working, and I followed him here, and, and here, here I you am. are. <laughs> <laughs> here you are. So I have to say, you, we were chatting earlier about your, your free time interest of rock climbing and bouldering, and I find that there's a, there is a very clear connection because the courage that it took for you to leave your country mm -hmm. and go to another country, I can, I can speak of that myself. When I was a young woman, I left the United States, I went to Europe, spent most of my life there, and then after yeah, many, many years, decades, if you will, I came back to the United States, which was a totally different country. Mm -hmm. So I've done that shift twice, so I can really understand what it takes to do that. Mm -hmm. And for you to go to a culture that was totally new for you and you also didn't speak the language it took a lot of courage yes. so I um, I know well maybe you could just share a little bit about the okay. about the bouldering because that or the the rock climbing that was interesting what you shared about about fear mm -hmm. if you would yes so I've been doing bouldering slash rock climbing and at first I went to the other gym and it was just basically just do it on your own and it wasn't too high, but the gym that I go to right now is like 30 feet. And so that was three months ago that I went to the other gym to do rock climbing. Mm -hmm. So I told, I told the instructor that I've done this before, but it was, that was like three, four months ago. So he goes, you know what? You can do this. Okay. I've done bouldering. I should be okay. He believed in you. That's good. That's a good start. So halfway through I made a mistake of looking down mm -hmm. and realized that I'm really up high <laughs> <laughs> and so I started shaking I felt my legs shaking and so I looked down and I told him I'm scared and then he goes Joanne it's okay to be scared mm -hmm. I'm glad you acknowledge your fear now what you can do right now is breathe in breathe out nice you can either come down mm -hmm. or move upward either way is fine mm. and so knowing that one I think really helped me mm -hmm. that you had a choice exactly mm -hmm. and it's okay either yep. way yep. and so I decided to you know what I'm already here why don't I just go back up, the, up there and then just and you went up I went good up. for you I actually went up oh, good for and you. my challenge right now is going down gracefully okay <laughs> that's all that I can we can work on graceful later it's just getting down safely I think is the that's most important true. that's true <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm curious, I, I spent my, my life in Europe and you're coming from Asian countries. What do you know, what are some of the biggest differences you notice between working and living here in the United States as, we've already heard one, of course, the, mm -hmm. the idea of there not being female engineers, but just you personally, what are you experiencing in, the, in this country that is different from, from let's say, the Philippines or, or Japan? So Philippines is basically a mixture of cultures. Mm -hmm. We were conquered by Spaniards uh, some years ago, maybe 300 years ago. So we have acquired that culture. We have some Chinese culture. We have some American culture. So we're heavily influenced by American culture. Mm, okay. So coming here wasn't really a shock. Oh, for interesting. Me. Mm -hmm. It was going to Japan was a little bit of a shocker. <laughs> okay. Because you can't walk. When you're w with, with your, say, guy friends mm -hmm. or your
your boyfriend or you can't walk right next to him unless he's asking you to okay, be next to me. You have to be like behind them. Oh, interesting. And in the Philippines, what was it, 20 years ago that we voted for a female president? Hmm. So we already have the strong women. Mm-hmm. So, and so in, the, in Japan, that was a little different because you have to lower your voice down. You're not no. supposed to speak like that. A little subservient. Or, exactly. Or, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so that was just uh, maybe a little bit of culture shock I got mm -hmm. in Japan. Mm -hmm. And there, what else? When I was going to school, because I had this two weeks class that I had to take before leaving. Mm -hmm. And when we got to the airport, and the there's different forms of Japanese, mm -hmm. Japanese language, like the sentence. If I'm talking to my boss, I'm going to be really formal. Oh, you have the formal and the informal. Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So most of the things that I study in school are all formal languages, right? Okay, yeah. And so, but if you are on TV like this, you're using different words or terminology mm -hmm. as well as at the airport. Okay. So I was listening to the announcer at the airport, and I was like, I don't know that word. Because <laughs> they was like, were like, did my teacher lie to me? Did not teach me the correct one? Oh, and so it's like, so my teacher told me it's because those kind of things, they, they, they're, so, they're so focused into hierarchy. Mm. This is formal. Talk to your friends like this. Right. Talk to your parents like this. Talk right. to your friends like this. Right. Talk to your co-workers like this. And so I, ca I can relate to that. In, so in German, where I spent most of my time, there is also the formal and the informal form of address. And I was always surprised that people would live next to one another for 20 or 30 years and still be using the formal form of address. Wow. Or they may even be um, using first names, but nonetheless they're using the formal form of address. And what's so interesting is that when when they decide to change over to the informal form of address, it has to be the person who's in authority or who is older. The younger person or the person who's in a lower position hierarchically cannot make that suggestion. And when the suggestion is made, the people reintroduce themselves with their first names. Literally, they put out their hands and they shake hands and say, Hi, I'm Lisa. Wow. Yeah. That it's so interesting, interesting because now you have entered a new phase or a new aspect of your relationship. Isn't that interesting? Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So there are those interest, interesting differences. Have you also found that something I've struggled with here are the acronyms. I have such difficulty, and, and the Americans use acronyms left, right, and sideways, and sometimes their they're same acronyms are used for different things. Mm -hmm. And I stumble over those. Do you have difficulty with that or anything similar to that? When I got here or... Um... Or, or even now. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, definitely, because I there's, oh, Google always helps. <laughs> Good point, yes. Thank, thank <laughs> it's you, like, Google. <laughs> it's like, uh, somebody tells me something, like, hold on, hold that thought. And it's like, <laughs> Google this You're thing. going to, that's right, Google, 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 that's what Guru I wanted to Google, say. Google, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. So that's where you get your help from. Yes, and, well, my fiancé is... Uh, American, like um, born and raised here. Okay. And so, if there's something I don't understand, I ask him. He'll like, help. Well, what do you mean by this? Or which right. in which content can I use this word or right. acronym or yes. something like that? And then there's the idioms. I, I, my daughter and I had a had a um, interesting, and we we've always remember when we first arrived here, and she had grown up in Germany, so she yeah. spoke both languages. She's bilingual, but she totally identified with the German culture. And so, and because I had grown up in this country, I had phraseology that she didn't have. So something had happened with one of her friends, and the friend was having difficulty. And so I said to my daughter, well, the question is, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. Did she have difficulty because she is this way, or she is this way because she had difficulty? And my daughter looked at me, and she said, well, what did come first, the chicken or the egg? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, was she this way or that way? And then she said, no, what came first, the chicken or the <laughs> egg? And I mean, she, she thought that was the content of the conversation. And we just, we had a hoop about that. And then I explained the, the uh, phraseology to her. 
which is a, what is amazing at work right now is I am the only female minority manager. Really? So we have, every time we have these meetings, I see this men mm -hmm. around me. Mm -hmm. And they talk about these things that I don't know. And so I was like, okay, so guys, I did not grow up here. What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. Can we not use idioms right now? Good I don't you. have my, <laughs> my Google. And mm -hmm. so they will explain that to me. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm, that's something I am proud of, too, mm -hmm. that I am the only minority there, female. Yes. And, and to take a stand like that and, and create the parameters that, the, that it's going to work for you as the team lead, exactly. right, that you can do your job. So that's what I was going to ask you in, before we close today is, what is some advice that you would give to people who are coming over to the, this country or changing cultures in general and going into the workforce? What would you advise them? So going to a different country is already challenging. And my advice to that one would be to just immerse yourself in the language. Mm -hmm. Remember that you are also, not, you're not just here working and living, but you're also representing the whole country that you're from. That's a good point. And it takes time and just embrace it and just enjoy that journey. And for those joining the workforce as a minority, as a mm. woman, yeah. women of, of color, it's just, you just have to prove that you have something to offer you look them in the eyes, <laughs> you don't giggle when they say jokes that are not appropriate. Yep. You tell them, I don't like that, that mm -hmm. is not funny. And uh, just take a stand because nobody else will. Yep. You. Beautiful. Well, good for you. And I really, it's nice to hear a woman like yourself taking that kind of stand, minor minority or not, just taking a stand for women and just in the workforce, being a person to be respected independently of your gender or your background. Correct. So, thank you. It's thank been you. such a pleasure chatting with you, and I thank wish you all so the much. best in your you. in your future journey. Thanks. Thank you, and thank you for joining us for this segment of Good People Doing Good Things. I'm Lisa Steindorf, and until next time, be well. Hi, welcome back. Good to be with you again. My name is Bill Mayer from New Horizons Toastmasters Club. For a few minutes this evening, we're going to talk to James Wants, who is a member of the club, as well as in a district position. We're going to be talking a little bit about pathways, which is what Toastmasters International has formulated for people to excel in their teaching and leadership skills, similar to what we've done in the past. James? Thank you for joining me this evening, and I hope we can talk a little bit about Pathways. Absolutely. I saw you do a presentation just a couple of days ago, and I really appreciated a couple of the pictures that you had to describe the legacy, which was train tracks. We basically had a communications track and a leadership track, and that's very familiar for those of us who've been in Toastmasters for even a little while. But now Toastmasters is providing Pathways, and you provided a picture of a ski area. Actually, it was Mount Everest. Mount Everest. Now, there probably are people skiing on Mount Everest, but the reason I chose the image of Mount Everest is because that there are many different ways to get to the summit. And in fact, that image had over 10 different paths that were shown to get to the summit. And I figured it was the best visual metaphor for pathways. Because in the new pathways, the new educational program, there are 10 individual paths mm -hmm. that any member can choose one of those paths and proceed all the way through the five different levels. Before we get to talking about the individual paths, I want to see if there's similarities between the legacy and the new pathways. And I've dived into pathways a little bit. When you start with the legacy system, you have the competent communicator, and then you get to the advanced manuals, and there's a lot of options with the advanced manuals. They've done away with, from what I understand, the competent communicator, and they've kind of folded that into all of the different pathways. Would that be an accurate description? That is true. That is true. The Pathways program takes all of the pieces of the legacy educational program and folds them into the 10 individual paths, as well as liberally sprinkles in brand new content that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. 
So the icebreaker speech, which everybody is familiar with from the CC manual being the first project that they do, mm -hmm. is still the first project in every single path. Because Toastmasters believes, and I, I also do too, that each time you do your icebreaker speech, you're learning something new about yourself. Whether it's your presentation, whether it's your, I, I don't know, how you're received maybe. So that the first speech is the same. And then people are going to recognize researching your topic, doing evaluations. All of those pieces are pulled in from the legacy program and are resident within Pathways. Hmm. How does one get started navigating Pathways? That is one of the biggest changes for Toastmasters so far. because The legacy program was designed around manuals, actual manuals that we would use and take to our clubs. Pathways is designed as a completely interactive online environment. Mm -hmm. It lives on Toastmasters International website, so you can go to it on your, your tablet, your computer, or your laptop for that matter. Once you log in, you choose the Pathways and the Pathways Educational Program, and it takes you to what is called Basecamp, which is every single member's beginning point with their path and how they interact with an online curriculum. It's set up very much like the online curriculums that you have with colleges. Mm -hmm. People go in, choose projects, have assignments, finish those projects, and then have them checked off within Basecamp. Mm -hmm. The difference is that the entire interaction is in an online environment as opposed to, as opposed to printed material. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm a bit of a throwback. I want hard copy. And there is an option within the projects. You can print out the entire manual in a PDF format, and that's what I do. Okay. I download the PDF, I print it out, I take the hard copy with me to my club meeting so that I've got my paper, I've got my evaluations, I know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. because I, I like the tangible feel of the paper in that regard. I agree with you on that, and it does have a sense of security with that. Another aspect of the legacy system that I think there has some similarities with the pathways is I do 10 speeches and I get another level of leadership or communication. Here I'm working for badges. Is it still 10 speeches kind of a thing? It's actually much faster hmm. because with the legacy system, you'd have to do those 10 speeches before you be a competent communicator. Mm -hmm. With pathways, you progress through five levels in each of the individual paths and once you've completed a level you receive the badge as a completion for that level. Well level one which is the same for all paths mm -hmm. has four speeches and one evaluator role. So you give four speeches, you serve in as evaluator and you've completed level one of your path. Mm -hmm. Level two then starts to take on unique characteristics of the individual path and you start having specific projects that are related to which path you choose. Mm. Great. Well, our time is just about up, and I thank you very much for your time and helping us begin to understand a larger picture of Pathways. And I have started. I'm looking forward to it. I think it really is a good adjustment for Toastmasters as we begin the 21st century in a new dimension to Toastmasters International. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. If you have any information that you need regarding Toastmasters or Pathways, go to ToastmastersInternational.com. Look for a Toastmasters Club. We'll check out Pathways. Find out Basecamp. And we hope to see you along your journey. Thank you very much for joining us.